Okay, everybody, so if you're ready to get started, let's go over the colors, the canvas, and the first brush I'm gonna be using today. I've got a 12 by 18 canvas. I've got a number 18 flat brush that I'll be getting, uh, or be beginning the painting with today. Phthalo blue, light blue violet, neon purple violet, neon yellow cool or lemon yellow, burnt sienna, and prism purple violet or dioxazine purple will work as well and i've also got some titanium white if you want some alternatives for these colors just let me know which ones you don't have and what else you could use if you're not sure just leave those down your questions and comments down in the uh, section below this video in the comment section and i'm also going to have a full list of all these colors and brushes i'm using plus some links to more tutorials and places you guys can follow me down below in the description box as well so I'm going to go ahead and just get my brush wet to start and I want to start creating the pale pale sky we're going to work background to foreground so the sky is going to be the first thing and what I want to do is add a little bit of white with a bit of my light blue violet and I'm just going to patch in just little crisscrosses crisscross strokes doesn't really matter you can apply it however you like. I'm gonna get a little bit more water on my brush because that really helps to work the paint out and saves a lot of frustration. Okay, so if you guys are just tuning in now and you're wondering how to extend your acrylics, you can choose mediums to purchase and mix in with your acrylics that will help them um, stay wet longer but I just like to use a little bit of water. Now just keep in mind that if you're using too much water, then your acrylics are gonna be very dull and transparent and you'll be left with like really no color at all. So just kind of practice here and there and you'll get a good feel for how much water um, you need. Okay, so we've got just a little bit of pale blue back there and I'm gonna add a little bit more I'm going to start just pulling like this just to get a feel for some of those weeping willows in the background. Up and down, a little bit of water, same colors, same brush. Super easy so, so far, right guys? You can all follow along with this. So again, the background just crisscross, blocking in patchy light blue with the white. And that's the light blue violet here. If you don't have this color, you can just make it, uh, make a similar um, shade using cobalt blue and, and titanium white or ultramarine blue and white. They're gonna, they're gonna change uh, slightly, but they'll be very similar in what I'm using right now. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do is bring that color down here and I'm going to pull side to side long sweeping brush strokes here and there I'm going to cover up part of this but I just want to have a little bit of it exposed and I'm choosing this color because it's complementary to all the greens and it's also going to pick up um, on the neon purple violet we're using and create another shade of purple. And you'll see that after, and you'll see how pretty that looks. Okay, so I'm gonna wash this brush out now. And I'm gonna make a dark green color by taking a little bit of phthalo blue, neon yellow. Now that's way too like emerald, bluey green for me. So I'm gonna dull it a little bit, tone it by taking some purple. A little bit more of that purple. And now we're left with, just gotta work that phthalo blue out of there. It's a very dominant color. Okay, we'll take a little bit of that, a little bit of water. And I'm just gonna start pulling across like this. I need a little bit more water. We'll pull right across. 
Then I'm going to start patching in. A little crisscross. And then with a little bit of water on my brush, I'm gonna pull and flick up. I guess you could go up and down. That wouldn't hurt. This is all just the beginning stages, blocking in and patching in our colors and our lights and darks. And let's mix up a little bit more here. So see the color you'll get if you don't add any blue. So it's really important to have all three colors. Or just use the darkest green you have. And if it's a bit too cool or too blue, then you can just tone it with a little bit of black or even a little bit of brown. Okay, I'm gonna go over another layer and make some of the areas here a bit darker and I'm going to go in between in between the blue that I added slightly over it and we're going to have our tree right about here so I'm going to add a little bit more shadow it's kind of like painting water at this point, it's kind of the same rule. You're just adding your light and shadow. Areas, just patching it in. I kind of like to travel around with a brush too. You can do that as well. Just blend, scumble. Okay, I'm gonna mix up a little bit more. Remember, you don't have to have the exact same color all over. So sometimes you can add a little bit less purple or a little bit more of the yellow. I'm just going to break this area up here. Okay, so now I'm going to take a bit of my blue and my purple. So the blue violet, the purple, and that dark green color that we made. And I'm going to start overlapping my shadows and just enhancing my colors. I love to play around with tinting my shadows. So when you're just a beginner painter, you might just see black and white for shadows and highlights and think, okay, that's dark. That's where the shadow is. I'm going to use black. Um, but as you start to train your eye to look and study things a bit more and just being an artist in general um, we see more colors and you'll start to play around with tinting your uh, shadows instead of gray and black you'll start to add blues and purples and that's when your paintings are really going to take off and pop off the canvas and you're going to just enjoy the process of painting a lot more So I'm still using my flat brush here and I'm going to take my neon yellow, a lemon yellow, a little bit of water and I'm just going to brush over where I have the empty spaces and then partially over, 
partially over the shadows. That'll give us different tones of greens. I'm going to add some back here over top of the dark areas. I like this little hint of blue that ended up there that I wasn't really planning, but it's kind of the nice thing when you don't over blend what you've got in your brush. When you have two or more colors, that's when you get those exciting little hints and bits of colors everywhere that you never really tried purposely to make happen. It just does. So I'm going to come in and around all the areas up here in the sky and just randomly, not thinking too much about it. Add a little bit here and there. Partially going over top of some of the other colors. I'm going to take a little bit of white with my blue, a little bit yellow, a little nice light color here. So it's just a little bit lighter. Now I want to take some of my purple, say a little blue, a little bit more of the purple. See how nice and dark and look at how beautiful the colors look together. We're going to add some more depth now. Bit of a light blue violet. Back over to my yellow. Just a little bit of blue violet with my yellow. And we'll alter the background green back here. See, I'm not really trying to make anything look exactly like a bush or a tree. I'm just very loosely layering in colors. Then I'm just going to slide, cut into this blue and purple right underneath. Pull a few lines, just giving us a little bit of a bit more depth. 
as to what may be going on in the background. Okay, I think that we're ready to start coming in with our tree. And I'm gonna be switching over to one of my filbert brushes. I've got a number eight here. You can use one a little bit smaller if you like. I'm gonna get it just a little bit wet and I'm gonna take phthalo blue, purple, and burnt sienna. Mix them up. And I'm gonna start my tree uh, right about here. I was gonna have it over here, but I think I'm I think I'm just gonna have it right here. So I'm just gonna pull a line, long shadow line, and for the base of our tree, a little bit more paint on there. I really want this tree to be the focal point, so we're gonna make it quite big. Okay, let's mix up some more paint. Take a bit more of the purple. And we go all the way up. Start to curve over and add a big branch here and then a few other ones. You see where it starts to, when you pull over and you can see, pull with your brush and you can see the canvas, all those little bits, you just need a little bit more water to help fill that in. Right in here. Add twisted cool branch right in there and they get a little bit thicker then I'm gonna just push and pull wiggle go all the way up and over I love the gracefulness and the character that these old weeping willow trees have I want you guys to really be brave and not worry too much about this part. This is the fun part. This is where you are taking chances and you're going to grow as an artist. So trust me, definitely want to go for it. And it's just a painting. Think of it as just practice. If you don't like it, just keep painting it until you are confident enough and, uh, learn along the way and you'll eventually get to that stage where you're excited to add big trees like this to your paintings let's crisscross cross over there this one's gonna be in the front though. This one is in the back. Well, a few other ones. And I'm gonna take some of my beautiful violet and the rest of those colors there. And I'm just gonna add, Oh, look at that. Isn't that exciting? Don't be afraid to have fun with color and experiment. If you really want this violet to show up and you like the intensity of it like this, you're gonna 
have to add it on a lighter underpainting. You can lighten it with white, but it changes the, the color slightly. You'll get more of a pastel color. So I'm going to add a little bit of this down here as well. Okay, I'm going to come in with a filbert brush, a larger one. This one's a number 30. And I'm going to get it a little bit wet. I'm going to take some white, blue, and yellow. And I'm going to start pulling. Pulling a little bit like that, and then right away, blue, yellow, and the other colors. Let's put a little bit of violet in there. Make a dark color. So all the colors with a little bit of white. I'm gonna tap and pull. Tap, tap, tap for the foliage and pull to create that hangy look. And come right up here. Add a little bit more. And another brush that I want to show you guys is a one inch oval mop brush. These are really nice brushes to use. Okay, I just added some more paint to my palette here. I'm going to do this dry. I'm going to add a little bit of purple, blue, burnt sienna. And I'm going to tap over these branches. Get a little bit of that violet, both violets in there. See, layer upon layer like this is what's really going to give you that magic look to your landscapes. They look dreamy. And there's going to be so much depth and life to your paintings. Okay, I'm going to take a bit more of my burnt sienna blue. I'm going to grab a little bit of water on my brush now. It was dry to begin. And now we're going to use some water to help release the paint out. And give this really blended look. take some white with all those colors in my brush and a little bit of blue
bit of yellow, white, along with that. Tap, tap, tap. more generous with the yellow. We're going to come right in the front here and layer over that. yellow and white on the end of our brush. Tap, tap, tap. You can use other brushes for this technique, a fan brush, a filbert brush. So don't worry if you don't have uh, the same brush. Add a little bit more green down here. Now I'm going to take some of my violets a little bit of phthalo blue. Play around with my shadows and light down here. Tap, 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 some more over top. And then a gentle pull and flick. So I know it's really repetitive, but that's what's going to help you guys learn it. And it helps to say it while you're applying the brush stroke. Just tap a little bit Back in here. Okay, I'm coming with another layer of branches now. I'm going to use my number two round brush. So again, a number two round brush, purple violet, phthalo, and burnt sienna. Just pull, twist, watch how I'm, I'm twisting and rolling the brush as I'm pulling it along to create all the branch shapes.
and then I'm going to pull out some more vines and use this brush just by turning it on on the side like this you can do little taps as well a little bit more of the burnt sienna with a little bit of water. I'm going to pull and drag out some more of these dark, dark colors. little drips in here doesn't hurt and then I'm gonna go into my white and my yellow and a few areas here I'm gonna catch the edge of some of these branches A little bit more of white and yellow. Soft, gentle little flicks. And then I'll take a little bit of my blues. Violet, a little bit of white. Just come around the edge here. A little bit of white for that smoky plum color. Let's add a little bit of that too. This looks like that Spanish moss. back with a little bit more of my blue and with a clean brush yellow back here I think 
come in with another branch. One right here. See, I've got all those colors on my brush without mixing them all up. That way you get kind of a marbled look. And a few little gentle pulls. I want to add some more burnt sienna to the tree along with uh, the purple violet. I think it gives us a nice, and look, I'm not over blending. I'm just adding it over parts. Then some of my blue halo blue. Now you can use other blues if you want. It will um, alter the color slightly, but it will look really pretty. Cobalt blue, ultramarine blue. And a little bit more. Very patchy. A little, I still want a little bit more of my purple violet here because I'm just loving this color. So you kind of just have to play around and find the right amount that works for you. I'll take a little bit of white with my violet and we can get a few pinky tones going on in here as well. I think this is a nice addition to what we've got going on. Take a bit more along with some yellow. And I'll take a little bit of white with my phthalo blue. I'll add a little bit of that.
think a little hint of that is really quite pretty in here. So we have enough muddy tones going on to balance out all the pretty colors that we've got here. a little bit more light in here. Let's break up this solid uh, line that we've got. Take a little bit of my yellow and white now. Just wiggle some little patches around. Okay, now I'm going to take a tiny bit of blue with my yellow and white, make a turquoise. I'm going to add my final colors in here. Let's go over this with a little bit of my burnt sienna and blue. Okay, I'm gonna call this painting all done. So this is my style using a lot of colors. I hope that you guys want to paint along with me and I'll see you all soon in my next video. Thanks so much for watching everybody. Take care. Bye.